But everybody knows question generation is really important. We, we don't need to talk about the ideology of that and why it is important. Everybody can figure out and imagine that it is really beautiful and important. So I want to explain this interesting article from Cornell University, Learning to Ask Neural Question Generation for Reading Comprehension. So it uses the question generation for reading comprehension. For example, uh, uh, for annotation, you can annotate that with some question because you have lots of text, so you can annotate them. So it's good. And they use this squad uh, data set among many data sets, such as Hotpot QA, but they use squad. And they, they, so they use question generation is good for, for automatic annotations of data sets because uh, those crowdsourcing guys, uh, they're very expensive. You should pay bill millions of dollars just for, just for annotation because uh, complex text requires people that if you, if you enter the errors of annotations, then, then it becomes a, even a bigger problem. So all of the annotations should be correct. So we have a sentence. We have uh, we can we want to generate different questions. For example, if you if you focus uh, if the attention is on the photosynthesis, then this question is generated. If attention is on sunlight, then this question is generated. If attention is on water, water, then this attention. So we have three. So we have three questions that uh, you can generate from this sentence. And this model that I, in this paper, this model does not rely on handcrafted rules, sophisticated NLP, such as, for example, dependency parsing, discourse parsing, lots of different versions of dependency parsing, such as graph-based dependency parsing or transition-based dependency parsing. And you don't need all of those things. You don't need computational linguistics. So that's the benefits of just end-to-end -end neural networks. So the, the task of question generation, you have a sentence X, you want to, gener you want to see which, which Y, which, which uh, question could maximize this, which question is better. And so each question is Y1 to Y, the number of words in this question, and each sentence is uh, X1. So you have a problem that you give sentences such as word one, word two, word M, and the output is, so question generation is this. The output is, uh, for example, Y1 and it doesn't m um, doesn't need to be the cardinality of y because the number of words in the question could be very different from number of words in the sentence so this is y y and uh, this is the task of question generation and as you might expect we use gru's so we have some encoder and then uh, you pass it is to decoder. Now you decoder, and we use some kind of global or local attention. We call it hard attention or or or, or soft attention, uh, in order to to see each word of the output. For example, it generates this question. This comes here. Sample again. This comes here. Sample again. So you generate question. Uh, so this is the decoder, this is the encoder. And so here we investigate two variations of our models. Uh, so we focus on, uh, without loss of generality in this lecture, I just focus on sentence and not sentence and paragraph. So we model the conditional probability using encoder decoder that I explained. We use a uh, global attention. Global attention is easy. 
Why? We call it soft attention in the literature. Soft attention, uh, so it is because it is differentiable, it's easy. But on the other hand, on the contrary, local attention is really hard because we call it hard attention. Because some because it we need to attend something so it becomes non differentiable so you have some issues such as non differentiability, but we we can always overcome that and avoid that by some tricks as usual. So this is the global mechanism. As usual, uh, you want to write it as a uh, your context. C of t, what is your context vector? It's just a linear combination of your attention vector and your h of uh, your hidden state. So h of s, let's say h of s source sentence, and t is the target. T is the target, I mean the question that, that we are generating. So a linear combination of uh, your uh, hidden states is very important. Uh, by the way, this, this concept of attention, I mean, this formula, it reminds me the uh, pointer networks and, and fascinating idea of pointer networks, PTR networks. Okay, anyway, so, uh, so C of T is your uh, context vector and uh, here, before going through there, it, this this guy is a function of context, context C of T, and also the hidden state of uh, decoder, a target. I mean target. So a function of hidden states and the C of, and C of T itself is just a linear combination of. Uh, your hidden states, but A of T, uh, this aligning in the literature, they call it aligning because of uh, that great mind, Bengio, uh, in the neural translation using re recurring neural networks, he used that word. And A of T here is really interesting. Uh, the simplest things uh the 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 most general things is a, a line a line could be anything i will explain later so the decoder is is this formula we 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 are the output is just i mean uh, is just a softmax and we need to learn y of t and y of s y of sentence and y of target and it it uses this is a concatenation so a concatenation of hidden state and your context. And and, uh, and so, as I said, C of T is a combina linear combination of your um, hidden states of the encoder, which, are, which is called B of I. I mean, bidirectional. This is the left one, this is the right one. So we need a concatenation. Oh, it's here. This is the concatenation. You give the concatenation to this formula in order to get the context. And then we need training as usual. We just use the negative like likelihood of training data. So once the model is trained, we do inference by beam search. And the possible path number should be k, for example. And so I explained that, I explained this, uh, this approach who, which uses uh, attention, but there are two types of attention, global attention and local, which is the topic of this article. So, the attention mechanism, you have a context vector, as I said, a context vector is just a linear combination of your hidden states of encoder. So H of S here, H of S bar here is the, this is the hidden states of encoder. 
So this is the context vector. And you know the context vector, so a combination of this context vector and this hidden state of decoder, target decoder, target is decoder, uh, is what produces A of T. I mean the output. So the output is a, co a combination of context and hidden states, hidden state of the target. And this is uh, attention-based neural translation that everybody is familiar with. Oh, so the point I want to make is, is we have two kinds of attention, global approach, always attend to all source force, the name suggests that local approach only looks at a subset of source words at a time. And so this local attention, we call it, this local attention, we call it in the literature, uh, it is hard attention because it's non-differentiable. We have problems of differentiability. But the, but the, but the global attention, it is called soft attention because we don't have any problem with differentiability. It's easy. But uh, you are wasting all of your resources, so you have redundancy in those things. If you think about it, you will see that local thing, it's, it's more natural. I mean, a human can, for example, I mean, human does not, at a time, at a sin single instant of time, human does not, pay attention to all words. It just pay attention to some words that is coming to my mind, for example, as I'm giving this lecture. Some words, one, two, maybe three words at a time comes to my mind. So, uh, so local, so I go for local attention. In the global attention model, as I said, it attends to all hidden states. But this is the the most general version. This one is the most general. But for simplicity, you just need to use a dot product of the hidden state of encoder and hidden state of decoder. So the global attention has a drawback that it has to attend to all words. Oh, I said all of these, which is expensive and potentially impractical. To address this, we propose a local attention. So, uh, local attention is better. Soft attention refers to the global attention approach in which weights are placed softly over the patches. The hard attention, on the other hand, selects one patch of the image to attend at a time. Uh, and this is a local attention variance because even local attention could be either monotonic or predictive. Predictive is a little bit complex because in, in monotonic, because finally A of T is this. The alignment weights are, are this, is this. And so P of T for monotonic is just T no problem, but for predictive, you see it's another model for itself. So for itself is, is this model. And this is the visualizations, alignment visualizations. Oh, I forgot to say this. 
Uh, so the distance between your sentence and P of T. Uh, so if if you go far far from S, then it's bad. It it is diminishing. So it is representing this windowing effect. Sorry for breaking your silence, but uh, this alignment could be anything, as I said. For simplicity, you can use just a dot product. So dot product of hidden states of decoder, blue one, encoder, blue one, and the decoder, the red one. So do not confuse attention, alignment, context. Do not confuse the three one. Each, each one has its own purpose. I mean, the philosophy of this alignment is that, you know, the modality of input and output, we're going to text, speech, question, answer, these things, different, different modalities, so different length. So because they have different lengths, we need the interface to, uh, to make them equal. I mean, the size of them, we need the size of them to be equal. So we do a, a virtual kind of uh, uh, variable, which we call it alignment. But Yashua Bengio can explain alignment much better and more interesting than me. It's really a beautiful topic, especially local attention, very beautiful. Uh, the idea of attention is really beautiful.
So attention is a combination of context structure and hidden state of decoder. And context vector, it's...